Hi, I'm Momtaz. Welcome to Hello Hugh, the show where I chat to chromatic characters about the joy of colour. So if you're a fellow colour lover, then Hello Hugh is for you. On today's episode, I'm going to be talking to Isra Almahal, and what's really exciting is we're going to be talking about natural pigments. So not just colour, but colour in its most natural form. We'll be talking about where colour comes from and how Isra makes her own paints as well. So welcome, Isra. Thank you. <laughs> You know, it's such a pleasure to talk to you. I mean, I'm a massive fan of colour and I know that you are too and everyone watching is clearly a fan of colour as well. But one thing that is a bit of a mystery is where does colour actually come from? Um, this is your world because you work with natural pigments. Um, but, but what are natural pigments and where do they come from? So basically natural pigments are all around us. We have them in the earth, like the ochres on the ground. Well, maybe not in cities, you don't see them as much, but just if you go around rivers, even in London, if you go around to the Thames, you will see all the, all the little rocks and things that are colorful that we can get colors from them. Also semi-precious uh, minerals like lapis lazuli, malachite, and we have like so many um, available resources. There are like plant roots as well, some insects, some of them are great, <laughs> especially the beetles, <laughs> like they're great for red. And they're kind of all around but with the natural world we have kind of limitations within the formatting the colors into paint and changing certain things because not every color that you see can give you like a brilliant color to paint with so it's kind of a process of choosing what's available and for what purpose so you actually specialize in an art form called islamic illumination and one of the colors that you know, commonly appears in that form of art, which is obviously often used in Qurans, is mm -hmm. gold um, and this gold pigment. Um, but where does one find the gold color from? Oh, perfect question. So gold is so much fun to paint with and it actually comes from various places. They mine the gold. So it depends on what country and where they get it from. And when you take that gold in the solid form, usually they take it into special labs or factories or even like within the mines and they make it into like very, very thin sheets. Um, so they come in a little booklet of 25 and they're like the finest sheets. Some people have similar sheets to um, use them to decorate foods as well. And then you take it into a process of mixing it with a binder and crushing it really, really finely for it to become into paint form. And this gold really does make that Islamic illumination art because you've got these sort of illustrations or, you know, uh, geometric shapes or flowers. But as soon as you add that gold, everything changes. It has so much power. Is gold a shade that you kind of associate with, I don't know, powerfulness or any sort of magical elements? Um, so basically with the gold, it's a very precious material and the fact that it doesn't tarnish and it stays for centuries in its pure form, I think that's part of its power. And also, they believe the Qur'an um, illuminates the mind, so they wanted to add the gold as well, so that illuminates you visually when you actually open it, so you have that powerful impact of both things. So it, it could have like a very spiritual meaning as well, and it's when I'm do, practicing my Islamic illumination work, gold is the first thing that I put on the paper because I show it the most respect and um, a lot of people who are practicing illumination I advise them to try like uh, the imitation gold which is also really cool and shiny but it's not natural the difference with um, imitation gold and normal gold is the genuine real gold is changing with the light so it's not always shiny if you have to angle it correctly to get that beautiful shine where the imitation gold is always shiny. 
because it, you can't really control it. Maybe with the light, it becomes even more shiny. And like, it's really difficult to work with it sometimes because it's like way in your face. But the natural, genuine gold, it's just so beautiful because it works with the light and it has a completely different impact. Now you do make your own paints, you actually mix up paints yourself and I remember seeing on your Twitter one time you'd written that your arms were really tired from the physical nature of creating colours. So could you tell us a, bit, a little bit about what's actually involved? So basically there are two types of starting making paint. You either get the pigment in a solid form which is just grabbing the rock from somewhere or buying it or you can get it as a powder. When when you get it as a rock form, you have to crush that into the powder. So that takes a lot of physical power into just like crushing into the pestle and mortar, getting that format. And afterwards, when it's like really pure and really clean, you put it on a glass slab or um, a marble slab and you like place it on there with some binder and um, some preservative and you just like go around with a glass smaller and you have to do it for a while it's not like you just do it for five minutes because you want to really mix it well with the binder so that could take up to an hour and your arm will really feel it after five minutes. So imagine doing it for an hour. Mm -hmm. And it's like when you're making various colors as well, it just, it really takes a toll. So you need like a, lots of breaks in between. It sounds like art meets gym. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> One of the things I love is that you share a lot of your colours as you're making them. They're so vibrant, but they have this real sort of muted quality as well, which always surprises me because, as I say, they're, they're super bold and bright, and yet they have that natural feel to them. What does it make you feel like when you actually see your colour sort of coming out and sort of being extracted? Like when you look at color in general, the natural one and the manufactured one, maybe sometimes they kind of look similar in their dry form. But once you paint with both of them, it's the interaction with the light that the natural pigments can give you that manufactured colors will never be able to deliver that. Like, yes, with manufactured colors, you get even more brightness. So that muted feel, you usually get it from the natural pigments. But then it's like, they're muted, but they are alive. Like you can, you can see them moving slightly and it's like not every a, a particle is perfectly the same size as the other one, which makes it interact with the light differently. And it's just, it's a really a beautiful feeling. If I feel so privileged that I learned this, that I practice this and that I actually give it to people to try. And in terms of being an artist, what do you prefer? Do you actually have a preference for using natural colours or manufactured colours? Well, at the moment, I'm making my all my own paints um, via my paints brand Bristol & Brush. So I've been only using that like this most of this year but there are some good manufactured colors out there so i'm not discouraging people like if you want to paint painting itself is like the the higher purpose so it's kind of a very personal choice and in terms of you making your colors has there been any particular surprises whereby you've tried a material and it's just come out so much more amazing than you expected and has there been any materials that you were kind of expecting great things from but the color maybe wasn't as you know what you were expecting um i experimented with crushed green jade the other day and it was the most disappointing um <laughs> result because i thought it would be at least a little bit green a tiny bit i didn't want loads of green just a, a hint but it became gray because when you this is the tricky thing with a lot of natural pigments is when you have them in their powder format they change into really the lightest form of that color so it just became a sad gray i mean some people actually really liked it on insta stories they're like oh i want to try it i was like um do you <laughs> so when it comes to a really 
fantastic color. I would say malachite because when you start working the malachite, it starts as like a really light, subtle green, and then it becomes super vibrant and almost fluorescent, depending on what you put next to it. If you have like a really dark color next to the malachite, you will see it as fluorescent. It's it's gorgeous. I love it. So in terms of people making their own colours, how accessible is this as an activity? Is it something that anyone can try from home or do you need to get some specific kit for it? It's actually really easy to try from home. If you have like a glass cutting board or whatever and another glass cup that has a flat surface, you can just start with a powder pigments and just like mull it over with these two. If you have like a bigger budget, you can just go to Carnalison's. It's a shop in London and they are specialized in pigments and they are amazing. Um, and you can buy like the proper kit if you want, but it is doable to just do it with whatever you have. Like, obviously having the kit looks nicer, especially for photos, but you can still make it happen. And you can start with just collecting um, some earth, like just sand that is, like, you don't want just sand from the beach. You want like the textured, um, almost like clay kind of sand to start from. And then you need a binder depending on what you want to use it as. If it, is it watercolor? Is it oils that you're trying to make? So if it's watercolor, you just need some gum Arabic and it works like you need few ingredients, but it's very, very doable. I think I definitely like to have it go. I still want to experience a bit more with kind of like plants. I think plants and then kind of earthy materials, um, because just that feeling of the magic of kind of just having an item perhaps that you recognize as being an everyday item and then it becomes this colour, that's just something so special um, about that process. I know a lot of people are getting more interested in natural pigments and natural colours and it's a lot to do with kind of sustainable living and us all being a bit more sustainable in our everyday life because colour creation in, in, in industry can actually be quite damaging. Um, there are various stats and examples of where, you know, the clothing industry has, has made colours and it's completely polluted rivers and, you know, and it had some terrible impact. So, in terms of natural colour, what would you like to see as the kind of future for natural colour? Do you think we will be seeing it in more aspects of our life over the coming years because of the sustainability um, you know, issue that you know, we're all so concerned about right now? Um, it depends on the actual colour because as I said, with natural pigments, you don't get like extremely vibrant like uh, think of like hot pink or like a uh, super yellow like you don't really get these with natural pigments um like that super bright red sometimes and some of the colors that do make these are actually quite toxic so like the reds usually contain mercury and not all the reds like the earth reds are fine but just the, like the mineral and it's not toxic as a paint, but it's toxic in the preparation of it. So it really depends on the scale of things. But it would be nice to see more natural colors and more natural dyes. And one way, of course, to experience natural dyes is your paints. You mentioned it in our chat. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit more, just finally, to tell us a bit about the paints that you actually sell on? And what kind of kits and colors can we get from you? Oh, for sure. So I started my paint brand Bristle and Brush um, in July, so it hasn't been that long. And I offer various things. So I have an earth set, which is only colors that come from earth. And it's really fascinating the amount of shades we just get from the ground. Um, and then I have another bigger set, which is called the Wonder Set, and it has 12 colors. It includes the earth sets plus few minerals and few, like one plant based and one um, insect based. But there is a vegan alternative as well. So, so they're like most of the paints are vegan and they're plastic free. So I'm like, I'm trying to do my bit for the environment, but it's so difficult. It is so exciting to hear that you're a passionate artist, but you're also making your own colours as well. Thank you so much for uh, joining me today and telling me a bit about your, your colour story and uh, you know how natural colours play a role in your life. Um, it's definitely worth checking out your beautiful pictures. I love the imagery Thank you're you. sharing of your paints that you're making. They are just, they're just sort of mind-blowingly beautiful. <laughs> um, so I wish you all the best with your painting feature and your paint making as well.
Thank you. It was so nice talking to you.